welcome to the morning show. We're coming to you today on WJOPLP New Report at FM 96.3 on Channel 9 and on New Report Community Media's YouTube channel at ncmhub.org. I'm your host, Mary Jacobson, and today I am delighted to have two volunteers from the really intriguing Alternatives to Violence Project, and they're going to talk to us about how that started and what they do. So welcome to Kathy Desiletz and Rebecca Ropp. Kathy, Rebecca, thank you both so much for taking time this morning to come to the morning show and to share your knowledge about alternatives to violence. Thank you for having us, Mary. Oh, it's yes. my pleasure. I've been looking forward to this since we, we booked you a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I thought perhaps it would be interesting. I know that Alternatives to Violence has a very interesting origin story. So I was hoping we could start there with you telling us about when, where, why Alternatives to Violence Project got started. Well, it is an interesting story because um, it really got started from inmates in a jail. Yeah. And um, partly the reason they started it is they were moved into this jail in New York um, after the, um, I say, the events at Attica. Yeah. Um, tragic and yeah. powerful yeah. events. And so they were in jail in New York. And they were both seeing what was happening to younger people in the jail and also remembering things that were happening to kids on the street. Mm -hmm. So it was out of the altruism of these um, people who were yeah. incarcerated that this program really started. Yeah, um, yeah and uh, they invited uh, some community members to develop a program um, that we know as the Alternatives to Violence Program, or AVP for mm -hmm. short. Yeah. Um, and uh, since that, so that was in the mid 70s, 1975. Yeah. 1975. And since then, the program has kind of naturally spread um, across the United States and internationally. So it's a, a thriving program now, both. Um, uh, workshops within uh, the prison system and jail systems and also out in the community. So what it, what developed um, is a series of workshops that are really on uh, conflict resolution. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, well, it is a wonderful and so intriguing story because it cuts against the stereotype many of us might have about mm -hmm. what prisoners are and what they value, what they're like, because it was out of their altruism. I mean, their concern for future generations that they wanted to be able to have a preventive impact so that young people didn't wind up incarcerated as they were. So I think that's a wonderful, inspiring part of the story. Mm -hmm. um, and it's clearly has been working well because it's taken off and it's international now and it's survived uh, for like 50 years so something's going right obviously <laughs> clearly there as well I'm curious to find out what made each of you interested well first of all how did you find out about the project and then what made you think to yourself gee I think I want to do that uh, well I first heard about it um, from someone that was at a church I was going to oh. um, and that was actually I was living out in California at the time oh. and so she kept inviting people to AVP I didn't know what that was <laughs> um, but I understood it was a conflict resolution and I um, kind of heard about it year after year when there were opportunities to take this workshop but I was so busy with yeah. working and with life um, and these workshops are a uh, uh, 18 to 20 hour commitment so okay that's substantive it is substantive so at that point it was um, the workshop I ended up going to was uh, a, a, an entire weekend yeah right so you got to think about it and make sure you make the time for it yeah but the um, the trigger for me to get involved was uh, I was having conflict in mm -hmm. my workplace so um, I'm an electrical engineer and uh, things had been humming along and then this one project I was working on there was just so much contention huh. and um, it was it, I, I didn't have the skills to handle it I was bringing a lot of stress home oh, and dear, then yeah. when you're stressed at home that can lead to conflict yeah, at home absolutely. Um, so I was like 
okay, maybe conflict resolution <laughs> would be a good thing for me to learn. And, um, and at that point, I mean, it, it was so much stress that I had requested to go down to half time at work. So oh, it was wow. really impacting so was, my life. Yeah. And suddenly I had the time to say, <laughs> yes. A twist of fate. Yeah. Yes. So that's yeah. how I got involved. Um, I think uh, since it is involved with the prison system, a lot of people have other entry points. They might be yeah. interested in, yeah. um, in alternatives to violent behavior. Um, but for me, it was just, I, I need some help. <laughs> and did it help with your work situation? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've learned so many skills. Yeah. I, you know, I went to one workshop, the, we call it the basic workshop. Yeah. And then I came back for the advanced workshop. Uh -huh. And then I was invited to go through the training to become a yeah. facilitator. And I thought, you know, I, I could see what was going on in the workshops, which was not that people were the facilitators weren't teaching us mm -hmm. um, how to resolve conflicts. We were experiencing how to oh. resolve conflicts. Okay. So From the inside out. You, it's um, it, it's practicing. Yeah. Right. So we okay. we make these workshops where you're practicing, practicing, and that's what helps your brain be able to react in a way yeah. you, that's successful in real life right. conflicts. Right. Because you don't go straight to, let's say, blaming people or, right. or, or yeah. getting, um, Whatever you know. those emotional habits were, you replace them with new ones, which exactly. sounds really important. And I could see the impact it could have on other people's lives. Yeah. It's something that, um, you know, I... It, so I get something out of it, and I get to give, and I mean, what's better than that? It's a win-win, <laughs> every yeah. which way. Yeah. Well, that's a great story, Rebecca, because from thinking, what the heck is AVP? Mm. <laughs> you know, to finding out what AVP is, and then noticing a place in your own life where you were feeling stressed out and thinking, you know, this might fit the bill for me. That's a great mm. story. Thank you very much. How about you, Kathy? Well... I also got involved in my church, uh -huh. and um, it's a church you actually know, FRS. Here. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, um, this was before Reverend Rebecca was there, yeah. uh, but uh, there were a number of people in the church doing it. And I, more, more, I, I had recently retired, and I was trying to figure out, what am I going to do with my life now? Yeah. And in my, so when I first heard about AVP, I liked it for two reasons, and one was that it really grows out of Quaker principles. Mm -hmm. um, the first people who the think tank or the name for the guys who are in jail okay. did was invite people from a various number of peace groups like um, Creative Solutions to Conflict mm -hmm. and Creative Conflict for Children and also from the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. So all of the people they invited had learned how to help people yeah. to think about what they want to do yeah. in a very practical way. Mm -hmm. um, so I was very attracted to mm -hmm. that, and I had done a lot of group work mm -hmm. in my life. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, I must have the skills for this. Mm -hmm. um, turns out that you need skills that aren't always the skills that people focus on explicitly, uh -huh. um, which is, um, you know, the things that have benefited me uh -huh. have been learning to let go a little bit oh, and not okay. be so stressed out all the time about everything that's happening. A very useful life skill. Uh, yeah. um, and it's, you know, you keep yeah. learning them over yeah. and over and over again or <laughs> listening, always listening yeah. before you jump on something. Yeah. I mean, that's a skill I think for many people we need to learn it over and yeah. over and over again. And so... Um, and I had done work in jail before also, so okay. I wasn't nervous about going to jail. I yeah. thought, because a lot of people are yeah, nervous. Yeah, I wondered about that. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and it's interesting because I have never felt safer than I feel in jail. Okay. The men we work with, I mean, we work in here in Essex County, we work, work mm -hmm. with all men. And the men we work with are so grateful. Mm. I mean, one of the things they always say is, oh, thank you so much for Aww. coming. Because I think, because the pro in our workshops and in the project in general, with each other and with the men, we try to always see the good in people and always mm. see the humanity in people. Mm -hmm. So we always start out by 
we say at the beginning of a workshop, we're trying to create a different place mm -hmm. inside jail. Yeah. Jails are not pleasant places. Yeah. It's not a natural thing yeah. for anybody to be mm -hmm. locked up right. or to be needing to lock people up. Yes. And be in ch be you know and keep them in order. Yeah. Um, and so that was an interesting piece of yeah. um, learning from Absolutely. this project and from learning how I, I had known from before that it what that, you know you don't need to, the only thing you need to be scared about is if something happens between the guys and it doesn't happen very often mm -hmm. and there's always help yeah. available yeah. and in AVP we know a lot of the skills if something starts to go wrong right. to catch it and uh, it sounds like from what you're saying that the workshop experience itself is something that builds prevention of something happening mm -hmm. and so that's very powerful well thank you for both of your stories I'm curious now to find out more about um, Rebecca you mentioned their experiential workshops not didactic you know mm -hmm. not lecture format so uh, tell us more about the workshops that you offer um, where and and I know they're in the prisons uh, uh, and who comes is it voluntary do they get to choose to come um, and what happens um, in them Okay, so um, so in jail, it's voluntary, but it's sort of voluntary because people <laughs> in jail people in jail are not in control of many things in their yeah. lives. So people will yeah. pick them out. We try to discourage our contacts from doing that because we'd like to have people be completely voluntary. Yeah. Um, the way we start to deal with that is if somebody seems uneasy or uncomfortable. We say, if this isn't, you know, in the first day, look, check this out. See if it's a good thing for you. Yeah. If it's not, drop out. And yeah. we have your back. We will yeah. explain why you dropped out, and yeah. that's perfectly fine. Well, that must be very reassuring for people I who hope are uncomfortable so. in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then um, we start by um, doing um, some activities that we almost always do at the beginning of the basic workshop and one is a name game um, so I mean you've probably seen name games um, this one we ask people to think of an, a positive name for themselves ah, okay. and for the rest of the workshop they use this name they're in a okay. separate place and they have a different name to help them get in touch with that interesting and uh, they all they have to um, they go around the circle and eventually they have to be able to repeat all the names in the circle okay. so they always say can't do it I can't do it but they end up being able to do it certainly better than I am as a 78 year old person <laughs> I often can't remember things for the 12 20 people do it um, um, another thing that's really key in these workshops is that part of what we do is play together so we have oh. what's called light and livelies and they're little <laughs> games um, and often they're based on children's games. Sometimes people, like we have a game that's called Howdy, 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 where you um, start out um, and you walk around. We always work in a circle. It's a yeah. symbol of equality. Yeah. And you walk around the circle and um, you tap somebody on the shoulder and then you both run in office or walk in Isn't opposite this duck, directions. Duck, goose? <laughs> That's what they say, exactly. And you have to get into the circle. Um, and we have a lot of games like that. Um, I think that's fascinating um, to start with the name, which starts creating sort of a shift in your sense of identity because you get to choose it. And, and it's free of any associations that you or other people might have with an identity that might have gotten you in trouble. Um, and then to help people tap into their child nature, which is more innocent and playful, and it must shift the mood in the room enormously from where it starts. I'm a, is that what happens? Yeah, I mean, the the games are, are fun. Like, yeah. you actually have fun with yeah. people that you haven't known for that long, Yeah, and, um, you know, you start bonding, because what we're doing is, the reason that the workshop goes for you know, a commitment of 18 to, to 20 hours is it takes time to build a little sub-community where people yeah. feel safe, mm -hmm. where people connect, where people are willing to open up and share about something as um, as deep as violence, as emotions, as fear and anger. Yeah. Um, and so the games um, do are interspersed between, like, 
kind of deeper, thoughtful exercises. Yeah. Yeah. So you need a break from that. Yeah, right. You need to lighten and that. You need to yeah. lighten things up. But there's um, there's so much wisdom to the games that I've observed. You know, it's not written out in our manual what yeah. everyone will get out of this. But, for example, the, the games such as Howdy, Howdy, Howdy or Duck, Duck, Goose, that includes someone coming up behind you and touching you. Yes. And in a prison setting, you know, that can be really uncomfortable. So yeah. even in the games, it's actually a, a productive part of um, building community, of even maybe experiencing some uncomfortableness yes. even in the game. But but the, the best part is laughing, having fun, right. doing something silly. Right. Um, is, Which is, is probably not what they were expecting. <laughs> right. For conflict resolution, exactly. Yeah. It is a surprise. <laughs> but it certainly would clearly shift the mood. Well, yeah. so so what else happens then? Do you want me to go? Yeah, you can um, Well, so uh, in the basic workshop, um, we really start with a baseline of communication skills. Mm -hmm. So... Um, of course, we all know with communication, being a good listener is helpful. Right, absolutely. Right, but it, again, this idea of not just being told, oh, well, you should listen well in this exercise, but actually uh, sitting and listening to someone else that mm -hmm. you don't know, I will, um, we try and mix up um, the partners that you talk to. Some yeah. exercises are a big group where we'll do a big brainstorm and then some are small groups, and then some are partners. And we're always mm -hmm. trying to get you to interact with, um, with different people. And so, for example, the, the, the listening exercise, you'll have to just sit and listen, not try and one-up someone else with another story, yeah. not even ask too many questions in response, just listen. Mm -hmm. um, and then it moves into uh, maybe an empathy exercise, mm -hmm. which... Um, again, you might not understand until you actually experience. What does it feel like um, to experience empathy yeah. as well as to give it? And that's part of the listening exercise. Yeah. You're right. You get really listened to. Someone's right. nodding and looking you in the eye and mm -hmm. not interrupting you. Mm -hmm. And so you get to experience those uh, positive things and right. like, oh, this is how it's done. Mm -hmm. um, and then, as I mentioned, there's there's more advanced workshops um, where I think people are choosing to come back. Um, uh, they already kind of understand the little, the subculture that we're trying to, yeah. to build. And uh, in the second one, we really give a lot more um, uh, authority to yeah. all the participants. So they yeah. get to decide what should we focus on? Should it be yeah. relationships? Should it be drug abuse? Should it be... Yeah. Um, uh, all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. Which must develop a sense of ownership of mm -hmm. the experience. I mean, right. groups are very powerful. Right. Um, people develop a, a sense of a bond and mm -hmm. community, and it, this is a population that might never have had positive experiences like that, much mm -hmm. less have somebody ask them what they wanted to do. So Yeah, and the point is to bring the wisdom from the group. Yeah. You know, that's the power in it, yeah. is that everyone, you know, has something to bring to the group, yeah. and so we're trying to to bring that wisdom out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really fascinating. Um, well, um, and so you build on those experiences, and gradually they take responsibility for a lot of what the topics are going to be. Mm -hmm. And then, how do you work to kind of I don't know how to put this, but solidify or ground the learning so that they carry them outward? from the workshop to their life within the prison and hopefully outside afterwards? Mm -hmm. Well, in every exercise, um, there's really a process. And the yeah. process is you explain the exercise, they do the exercise, uh -huh. and then you talk about what, in the big group, um, and we try to get everybody to be involved in this as much as they can, yeah. and you talk about, well, what did you learn from that? Mm -hmm. What happened yeah. there? What happened for yeah. you in that exercise? Yeah. What happened when somebody came back, came around, tapped you on the shoulder? What happened when um, you were talking to somebody and you couldn't talk? Yeah. Um, and 
so that's really the solidification I think yeah. and then there's a lot of repetition so uh -huh. um, but it's not repetition like you know a slogan or something that you have to learn it's taking the same skill and taking it in a different way or yeah. taking it a little farther yeah. and uh, you know one of the things I think about is an exercise that I've heard is used all over the world which is um, which is um, like also like duck duck goose in the way and it's um, somebody stands in the middle of the circle and says something that's true about themselves mm -hmm. and anybody who has the same thing true about themselves changes seats so they oh, have to get up and move around interesting movement is pretty important when uh -huh. you're going to be sitting in a room for six hours oh yeah so okay. so yeah. we want to give people a chance to yeah. be moving and in this exercise we say you can say something superficial something that's not a big thing so you yeah. can say everybody who's wearing blue yeah um you know and it's true about you mm -hmm. and anybody who's wearing blue changes mm -hmm. seats um anybody who is wearing um an undershirt <laughs> anybody who has tattoos yeah which a lot of people do yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, so it's all like and and we we always say and give examples too of yeah. you can also say something deeper like yeah. who believes in a higher power right who thinks people are good yeah and we don't even process that yeah. it's just for people to see who they're with because right. we always say the first step in in, in nonviolence yeah. is building a community and being able to communicate within right. that community that's, that's how right. most people learn mm -hmm. and yeah. um, so they um, have an opportunity to do that over and over and over in different yeah. ways I mean and uh, if something's not I, I think the other thing that's interesting is if thing if something isn't going well we do something that's called clinicking so mm -hmm. the facilitators will get together and say what do we need yeah. to fix Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes we do it in an open format with yeah. all of the men in the circle being able to help us figure out what we need yeah. to fix. I mean, sometimes I've seen us change the whole um, direction or way that we're doing a workshop based on this because um, we need to be responsive. Just like we say to them, you need to be responsive. Right. We need to model that because That's if right. we're just yelling at each other all the time, um, <laughs> yeah. they're not going to believe this be stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh, I mean, it's powerful. But, yeah, it sounds very powerful, yeah. but that also sort of having them participate in what kind of course correction do we need here, mm -hmm. it underscores their um, investment mm -hmm. um, and, and builds their investment mm -hmm. in the group. And I think that, um, you know, the activity where you talk about, you know, what's something true of you and who else? Mm -hmm. It's it sounds simple, but it's very strategic <laughs> because you're building a sense of commonality, mm -hmm. and as you put it, an onion-like way from things that are on the outside to things that might mm -hmm. be very deep, of like who believes in a higher power. Go ahead, Rebecca. Yeah, just um, one of the core things that we do get to in every workshop um, is what we call the guides of transforming power. Oh. So that's kind of the heart of yeah. the Alternatives to Violence project, yeah. um, what you'll hear about in every workshop. And the very first one, uh, it, there's, there's kind of 12 pieces of advice. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is seek to resolve conflicts by reaching common ground. Okay. So we yeah. are trying to build that even right. in, in the games. Um, and uh, they go on, you know, reach for that something in others that seeks to do good mm -hmm. for herself and others. Yeah. Um, learn to trust your inner sense of when to act and when to withdraw. Yeah. So these are um, maybe the part that kind of comes to, to teaching, right? They're, yeah. they're the same every time. Um, but there's they're not uncommon right like any oh, any conflict resolution is going to talk about common ground right so they're well, not but they're also just kind of like fundamental wisdom mm. exactly um, you know that um that it's helpful for all of us to be reminded of every mm -hmm. now and then yes. because life is so much better when lived from that place of mm. inner wisdom um everything is just more gratifying so yeah mm. and so the the question of how do we expect this to leave the workshop yeah. is we do 
give them um, materials that have the guides of transforming power. Absolutely. I, you know, yeah. a little business card. I have it. I have mine yeah. with me all the time. Yeah. So that. Um, you know, if I'm going into what might be a difficult situation, mm-hmm. I might need these reminders. And I think yeah. um, just having them in common language yeah. amongst the workshop. Yeah. Again, you you hear it every every workshop, and it, it comes to mind. Mm-hmm. You know, like sure. even in situations that are just a little bit difficult, they might not be going towards violent, but yeah. you want to reach for that inner wisdom. And um, and some of the feedback we have from uh, from the participants in the workshops is is particularly in the jail setting, is that when enough people do these workshops, uh, it cha- they bring it back to um, just their lives in jail. Yes. They they can feel a difference. They use these positive names for each other. They talk to people they never would have talked to before. Oh, isn't and that so interesting? It, it does make a difference. Yeah, it has a ripple effect. It has uh, a ripple effect a on the community. Ripple effect. Yeah. And from what you're saying, we would all benefit from having these on a card. Yes. <laughs> we read at the beginning of every morning. <laughs> yes. there are sometimes easy things to slip away from our grasp, and yet it's life just feels better when you remember to stay calm mm-hmm. when you look for common ground mm-hmm. um, because it cuts against that instinct to uh, which you know I say instinct because I think it is it's not rational but to sort of mm-hmm. blame others you know mm-hmm. or to get riled up um, and so it's a counter to that and it sounds very powerful mm-hmm. well one of the things I'd wanted to ask you about and you've started talking about it already is you know what you hear back from the participants about the impact that the program has uh, had on them, mm-hmm. not just short term, but long term, because I'm curious, do you have people who come back and let you know after they've been out for a while? Um, so what do you hear for, back from people? So a big thing that we hear back every time, almost, I don't think I've ever done a workshop where I haven't heard this, is, you know, I came in here to a room full of strangers. We mm-hmm. see each other. We talk about some things. We talk about handball and, you know, the food sucks and (laughs) things like that. Um, But we've never really talked to each other as people. Um, And I can't remember a workshop that I haven't heard that. And the other story I have is we had a workshop right at the beginning of the pandemic. And we, um, so the jails closed down. We were halfway through the workshop. Um, So when we were able to get back inside the jail, we tried to get the men, because we couldn't, they loved to get a certificate at the end. Um, And, oh, the other thing we always hear is, can we have pizza at the end? (laughs) So There's a commonality for all of us. Right, some things are are serious and some things aren't, and that's, I mean, that's life. Yeah, and um, you want a party, you want a celebration. Right. And they've worked hard in this Mm. workshop. They've had fun, but it's also hard work. I can hear that. But what I wanted to say about the um, the workshop that was in the um, at the beginning of the pandemic is when the guys came back, um, they said, um, and a lot of them were black, um, Mm -hmm. and they said we are the people who came back Mm -hmm. and they said well when we got back we formed a little group for ourselves to try to keep ourselves interesting in in touch with these skills Um, interesting and we also had a guy who was facilitating with us and i think we haven't said that yet is that one of the goals this our goals is to have half at least half of the facilitation team be people who are in okay. the situation that we're dealing with yeah so if you were working with a conflict situation um, in a neighborhood you would want people from both sides right and in this yeah. case um, we um, and then we want them to be the help the leadership yeah. so we try to have and, and we've done it without inside facilitators, and it's a completely different program. Okay. When the men are leading the exercises, first of all, the other guys see themselves in them. Uh-huh. Secondly, they relax, because let's face yeah. it, there's a two women who are going to walk out and be in a different world than they're in, and they yeah. don't think we have anything in common with them. Yeah. Um, and so it gives them, a, but they have learned by now when they're facilitation, yeah. when they're facilitating, that they have a lot in common with some of the other guys in jail. Mm-hmm. And right. a lot of it, the bulk of it is not about criminal activity. Right. The bulk yeah. of it is about 
we love our kids. Yeah. We want to be with the people we know outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the world isn't an easy place to live right. in, um, even if you're not in jail, and worse right. if you're in jail. Um, yeah. So that's, I think, a big piece, too, is that... Yeah. Um, that um, but I loved the guy. We were so thrilled when these guys told us they started their own oh, group. Oh, absolutely. Um, because you, you know you've succeeded. Right. Um, <laughs> In your aims. That's a wonderful story. Yeah. Well, I also wanted to ask you, because I, you know, I was reading around on your very interesting website for AVP, and I learned that you know, you, you're international now, but it also mentioned you do things in communities, a focus on youth and trauma resiliency. So I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about how AVP has expanded and evolved in those ways. Yeah, um, so I can speak personally to um, some of the first workshops I, I was able to kind of apprentice as a facilitator. Yeah. So I, we should mention, yeah, yeah, we encourage people to go all the way through if they want to become facilitators. Sure. But even then, you apprentice a few times because mm -hmm. you're it's experiential learning always, sure. right? <laughs> um, so I was uh, apprenticing at a, a program for youth that was like a, a, a work program, yeah. um, trying to uh, have, uh, I think it was like 16 to 22 year olds yeah. um, develop some work skills. And um, so that was the first time I worked with a, a, a focused younger group out mm -hmm. in the community. Um, and also I've worked in a, or I've, I've facilitated a workshop, uh, multiple workshops in a youth detention center. So these are kids who are, um, you know, involved in the criminal justice system, yeah. but uh, a detention center means that they they haven't um, been convicted of anything yet. Yeah. So, um, and that was really spectacular because the uh, um, the correctional officers also went through the program themselves oh, and became okay. facilitators, and everyone was just really bought in again. Yeah, just that's great. Trying to to make the best environment that's and a, great. a learning environment. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, we've seen all all sorts um, community workshops. Yeah. I mean, we would definitely, uh, uh, like you said earlier, everyone can use this. That's oh, what I fully <laughs> believe. I want it to be everywhere. You know, my experiences were in the workplace. I'm like, yeah, I, everyone I mean, needs this. Wherever people gather, there's conflict. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so wherever people gather, it's good to have alternatives <laughs> to, to violence. Yeah. Um, I'm curious about the trauma resiliency because they mentioned that on the website and I wasn't quite sure mm -hmm. um, what that meant. So Well, so I can take that question. Um, so first of all, all of us have trauma in our yeah. lives. These guys have a bigger amount than yeah. most of us, I think. Um, so we do a lot of things. I mean, even the games are part of that. Mm -hmm. It's like having a way to really take a break mm -hmm. when things get too tense. Let's do something different. Let's take a break. Then we can come back to it. Mm -hmm. So we really basically use a whole bunch of the classic trauma resistance mm -hmm. um, mechanisms. Mm -hmm. So we hand out to the guys in the first workshop a set of groundings ways when you're starting to lose it, oh, okay. you can get yourself grounded. Yeah. And they're really simple things. I mean, just touching your fingers right. to the tip yeah. of each finger or looking around the room and seeing how many things you can right. see at a certain color. Yeah. Because when we get caught in our trauma, mm -hmm. we're not thinking about what's right. in front of us. That's we're right. thinking we're about our history. Yep. We're thinking about things that hurt us. We have yep. a lot of emotional reaction. Mm -hmm. So this is to just say, come back to the space. Mm -hmm. We also do a lot of, I mean, we've started doing in our workshops, and a lot of other people do it too, a lot of using the breath to mm -hmm. relax. Yeah. So we try to remember, we don't always remember, but we try to remember to start every workshop by centering in the room. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, let's sit here, let's get our bodies as comfortable as we can, let's take three deep breaths, mm -hmm. And you know all yeah. the variations yeah. on that that you can think of, yeah. um, and we try to do that when we come back every yeah. time, so that it brings people into their starting of this right. in a more peaceful right. place. Um, yeah. Another thing we do is if somebody gets really agitated mm -hmm. during the workshop, 
um, if it happens just once, one of the facilitators will take them aside mm -hmm. and talk to them. And it's great when we have inside facilitators that are skilled because some of them can do it better mm -hmm. than we can mm -hmm. as outsiders. And you know, it does, sometimes people think, I mean, I remember I was trying to recruit some people from my church to be become facilitators. And mm -hmm. one of the people said, um, well, I know all this stuff. You know, I've had a lot of training and I've done all this stuff. And I said, yeah, me too. And I learn something every single yeah, time. Uh -huh. Because what we're doing is being with people. Right. And I just think just that yeah. is a help with Absolutely. trauma. I mean, just that. Just people saying, this is a safe space and a brave yeah. space. You can say uh -huh. whatever you feel like saying, whatever. And you yeah. don't have to say anything you don't mm -hmm. want to. You don't have to come in here and yeah. tell us your most traumatic experience. Yeah. You can start with something really simple yeah. and try to work with that. And the other thing is, and the founders um, had had thought about this too and learned it. They said they learned it from being um, from the first workshops mm -hmm. is that um, you start with not conflict. You start with communication. You yeah. start with affirmation. Right. I mean, for these guys, Often they've never heard people saying good things about them. Right. I mean, yeah. they have heard people say um, bad things about yeah. them more often, and especially right. as they've fallen more into yeah. the criminal justice system and right. the stuff that that is connected right. to outside. So that's another way yeah. that um, it works. And yeah. I think we didn't say this, but the structure of the program is every person no matter what their experience is, is trained by doing a basic workshop, then doing an advanced workshop, mm -hmm. and then doing a training of facilitators mm -hmm. workshop as a participant, mm -hmm. and then they apprentice, mm -hmm. which means yeah. they start to lead, yeah. and um, they apprentice until the people they're working with, because we're always working in a team, the people they're working with say, yeah, you're ready. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, it's always better if some of those people are the people who they're incarcerated with because right. they see that we mean what we say. Right. We mean what we say. Right. That when we're Absolutely. in this room, we may not be equal in the world right now because right now, at the end of this workshop, we're going to go out, we can buy a pizza, <laughs> <laughs> we can hug our friends, right. you know, yeah, we can do right. all the things that people do in right. normal life, and right. you can't. Yeah. But in this room, nobody has more nobody's word is more important right. than someone else's right. and I think that I think a lot of trauma comes from une inequality and the yes. exercise of power in right. in toxic ways I agree with you so yeah. I think that that stuff this program I think it's so brilliant what it is what the founders yeah. gave us and how people yeah. learn to build it that's right like back when this started people didn't talk as much about trauma as they right. do now right. but now people do we understand mm -hmm. it better so we That's focus right. we have ways to build yeah. that even more strongly because it was instinctively I think yeah. built in but we can build it in yeah. even more strongly well it is oh did you want to say something well, I just to? wanted to add up to the question about yeah. trauma uh, informed workshops are there's there are some people that kind of adapt the AVP workshops and add in um, you know training about trauma so there okay. are some workshops yeah. not every workshop but there yeah. are some that will mm -hmm. be um, you know advertised and put out there as like this is yeah about trauma yeah um, and um, the other thing uh, it's not necessarily about trauma but I think we should mention it is that um, it at least for the the workshops that are done in in jails and prison systems, there is research associated with it. So it's mm -hmm. um, it does our program does reduce recidivism, mm -hmm. and yeah. so there there are these programs trying to you know quantify the impact. Yeah. So don't want to go into all of it, but just want to mention it as research. No, I'm glad too. that you did. I, I saw some of that research on, um, people can find that on the AVP website as, mm -hmm. as well, and it's really interesting. But it's clearly um, a brilliantly designed program, yeah. and I love a safe space and a brave space, yes. which is what we all want, isn't it? A safe space and a brave space, and it's also clearly a transformative space. So 
you know, you, you've both done just such a wonderful job describing the program, your own experiences. One more thing I want to ask you, because I know you're looking for new volunteers for the program. And so I wanted to ask you, um, what would you say to somebody uh, about what, you know, they could expect to get based on your own experience? What would make this an experience that um, a potential volunteer um, would find gratifying? Um, what kind of person would be a good fit? Just what would you want to say to people that might get them interested um, in learning more about whether being a facilitator would be right for them? I mean, I always say to people, you will learn things about yourself yeah. in this workshop that you didn't know. Yeah. I have learned so much, mm -hmm. and I keep going back because I keep learning. I mean, yeah. I keep... People have things, know things that I don't know. People mm -hmm. know behaviors that I don't know. Right. Um, I also say um, you will have a chance to really learn about your, um, the ways that you're not that different from yeah. these guys in jail. I yeah. mean, who wants to be judged by their worst moment? Right. I mean, and that's what's happening to these guys. Right. So you will learn that, that, that there's commonalities, that, you know, these aren't monsters, yeah. um, most most mm -hmm. of them. I mean, I suppose there are some people who are sociopaths, but even those people have good inside them. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, those are some of the things that I say to mm -hmm. people. Um, and... Um, you know, I always say, even if you have a lot of these skills, um, you know, you feel like you're a good communicator or you mm -hmm. feel like you're good at forming cooperative relationships, you're going to learn something more mm -hmm. about it and you're going to be reminded. I mean, mm -hmm. for me, I mean, I worked in anti-violence for a long time in my life in mm -hmm. various ways, but I learn more about it every time. Yeah, um, well, um, so it's a lifelong Depth learning. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What about you, Rebecca? Uh, well, I love doing ABP, so that's mm -hmm. I think the first thing to yeah. to talk about. I mean, in this conversation, we've only scratched the surface. Yeah. We can talk about ABP and these workshops and the impact and the experiences uh, on and on. So, um, and I do think. Um, you know the the name alternatives to violence mm -hmm. program or project i think um for a lot of people they would say you know i don't need that oh. and so i think there's there's something about the name that might turn people off but when you hear about what it actually is and the change it can make in your life and yeah. the way you can impact other people's lives and right. um it's just like you said it brings out wisdom it it's fun uh, you're always learning, you're always right. growing, you're giving back to the community. So I think a lot of those things are um, interesting and appealing to so many people. And so, yes, we would we would love to have more people involved. Well, also, you know, hearing both of you talk about the program and the effect it's had on you and how you've learned and grown and changed, it sounds like if you want to feel impactful on the planet, <laughs> you will. If you want to feel gratified, um, that the work yes. you're doing is meaningful mm -hmm. exactly, um, yes. and transformative mm -hmm. for lives, and you've been a part of that, mm -hmm. as well as your own transformation, mm -hmm. and ABP facilitation is for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. so, final question I need to ask you then is if people do, you know, hear some of this and think, yeah, I want to check it out, who can people contact? How can they follow up on this? Uh -huh. So um, there are two ways that people can get in touch here. Um, and people can call me mm -hmm. um, at my um, home number, 978-255-4277. And often you'll need to leave a message, but I promise I will call you back. Because you're <laughs> off doing workshops. Right. <laughs> and um, also um, a good way is through AVP Massachusetts, the website. Um, which they can find on the website for AVP. And so if people have internet access, which I think almost everybody almost does now, does. I mean, I... Right. Um, or you that, can go to the library. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's access. Yep. Um, so yeah. we, so yeah. we, a good way, because they can get a picture, a little mm -hmm. picture, mm -hmm. um, a good way to start is to mm -hmm. look at the website. And Massachusetts has a website. 
the U.S. has a yeah. website and there's an international website, right. so you can learn a lot that way, so you get a little flavor. Also, sometimes we do um, and, um, what we call um, mini workshops or tasters. Oh. Right. So that's we'll do a maybe a three-hour workshop mm -hmm. where we'll use AVP activities and we'll yeah. do it with a group of people who have some interest but don't know anything about it. Yeah. Like we've done a couple in our church. Mm -hmm. I did some work in Rhode Island where we worked with um, the whole juvenile justice system, mm -hmm. really, and we came in, at the first step in it was we came in and did a mini workshop, so they yeah. got to see what it's like. ABP in action. <laughs> yeah, ABP in action. Yeah, action. <laughs> right. So there's a variety of ways to follow up and yes, find out. Yes, lots of them. And, um, I want to just go back to a question you asked, oh. is how do we spread this? Um, and I think mostly people who have been facilitators in AVP really work to recruit other people because we're the people oh, yeah. who have a big investment in this. Yeah, um, and you're so. great ambassadors. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> we try to be. <laughs> yeah, well I can't thank you enough both for taking time to be on the show and to share AVP with all of us. I'm really glad to have learned more about it. I'm super impressed and inspired um, by the organization and by the work that you do. Um, and thank you for the work that you do because you're clearly making for a, a calmer, um, happier planet. So thank you both very much. I appreciate it. Thank yes, you. thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Um, well, that's it for today, everybody. <laughs> Please join us again next Thursday at 9 for the morning show. Till then, everybody, be well.